Okay, I got this one done. Everyone just came in from the pool, so I was hoping it didn't get loud in here. But um, this one's kind of done. Then I thought, well, you could flip the branch and have the branch come in this way, kind of pointing down. But the only thing is, my all my birds are pointing. It's funny how you do things. Like I, they're all pointing in this direction, which is perfectly fine. Um, so I think I might try that. Um, let's see. I like this rose. This is just because it's a different. I have this rose stamp, so I put that in the middle. Um, but I'll show you what I do. So the first thing I do. Let me just set these aside. Push it over here. I have quite a lot of medium on my brush at the moment, and I'm going to move the sun. Sorry, things aren't sliding off as I would hope. And put some gel medium there on the corner, and I pick it up and put it where I want it, kind of push. That's how I do it, and it kind of helps Keeps you from getting all goopy. Oops, except for you pick up other things <laughs> if they're you know, close by. But that should stay. I'm going to move my little bird out of the way and put a little medium in that area where um, I want the branch to go. I guess. Oopsie, I just picked up my butterfly. I, I know where everything's going, so I really don't need to do that, but just in design wise, you know, uh, you can um, kind of put things where you where you think you want them and then take them off. But it's just a way for you to see where you're going with it, you know, um, if you haven't done it before, which I've done them already, so I kind of know where I'm going with it. And I'm going to pick up the bird over here because I like that one better. And just kind of, I like the way they look a little bit snotty. I like the little snotty bird look. Okay. Then I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to take all these off because then I'm going to put my big flower here. He's the tallest. And there. Put my medium flower here, my rose right there. Or actually that's the smallest. He's going to be the shortest. I learned this from like Zendangling. Um, what is her name? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I can't remember her name now. Oh man. But she likes to put everything so it's never the same height. And I kind of have been doing that myself when I when I'm designing I guess this is arranging or something um, I just think it's pleasing to the eye to have things at all different heights I like to use these big leaves these were the stamped leaves and then I drew the rest of them but this is um, like kind of like for the rose that's what I'm using and I put them kind of close to each other and then I'm going to put one here, like that. And over here, like this. And you know what? We can always add another one if we need it. But I'm going to start with that. And then these little ones, I am going to put a couple attached to the end of this branch right here. This one, and these are the stamped ones again. These are stamped from the, um, oopsie. That'll happen sometimes. I think I can switch it and fix it and push it. There we go. Um, what is it? It's the Lawn Fawn set, I'm pretty sure. And just make it kind of dangling off the end of this branch. Here we go. And that'll all dry clear. Um, good. I think I'm just going to leave it at that and let it dry. And then we're going to come back and do some more painting. All right. So I'll be right back. Okay. They're, they're dry. I just dried them, but this is dry too. So I'm just going in here and I'm going to go two and a half. Let me see if I like is that the, yeah, I want to do this end. 
two and a half, and these are going to be two and a half by three and a half. So now I have a background that's been started and ready to go um, for any type of a mixed media ATC that you want to create. Um, yeah, this one doesn't quite, oh, maybe it does. Yes, it does. I have four ATCs now, all ready to go. Um, so that's that. But back to our little one that we're doing now. I'm going to put this down a little bit. I think you might be able to see a little better. Um, cut this off. Now I like, personally like the effect of a wash on all of this. I don't want to, I'm not going to cover, my hope is to not cover up the writing on the paper that I've used. I like to see that through. I don't know. Um, so on my sample, which one? Yeah, all of them. On all my samples, you can absolutely see, right? Maybe a little bit, uh, dark on the leaves. But yeah, so for the birdie, I like to use a side load just because that's what I'm used to. Um, but you can do a wash. You know, you know what I mean by a wash? It's like, I just said that before, right? It's a lot of water. You're not just using paint. There is always water in your brush. And I'm just, so I went into the water. I'm going to pick up some blue. This blue that I had put out for the, um, uh, the background, I'm going to paint my little bird. There's a lot, a little too much water. And I like to just kind of go around his wing. I kind of just slide this color around his wing. And that way it seems like it's shaded a little bit. I don't know. And pull a little. But that's it. See how it's a wash? It's clear. It's not really um, opaque. But that's what I'm going for. I'm going to use this cool color. Now, this is a pearl, the Martha Stewart Hollyberry, and it's like a red. It's like a, but when you do it in a sheer coat, it comes up pink. See, I think these look pink. They're reddish. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I like it, but it's definitely got a pearlescence to it. So just a very little bit of paint on my brush. Look at that. See how it's shiny? Love it. And I'm just going to Put some around the, all the edges, keeping it sheer as best I can. And I've said it a million times, those of you who watch my videos, I am a what? Heavy hand. So that means I usually have enough paint on my brush because I just, I load it. I, I usually go in full. I don't pick up a tiny bit ever. Like this is all still going from when I first loaded it. And I do all the all the uh, flowers the same. So I can take a Q-tip and I can just kind of tone this down a little. Just take off a little bit of the color. And that's what that's doing is it's sticking on some of the um, uh, matte medium more than other places. So I like that too. So I'm going to let that dry. We're going to go in with some of the green, and I still have that out. Now, these are just any random colors. I just picked a pretty green that I liked. They're acrylic paint, so if whatever you have in your stash, use it. Don't uh, go get anything special. This is just a pretty green that I happen to like, and I'm going to go along the bottom of my leaves. And I might highlight these, too. But because the sun is shining, I just decided to uh, go along the bottom. And I actually made, did I make my butterfly? Yeah. I think originally I was making my butterfly yellow because I just figured I, that was one of the colors from my palette. But I had to grab the purple because, you know, I love pretty colors. So why not make a purple butterfly, right? And for this, I just put the paint right up against his body, kind of, sort of, where his body's going to be. And watch. I just do it very simply along the inside so that I'm going to put a little bit of white on the outside. You'll see. But you can see it's purple, and it's very shiny. But when we outline everything, it makes it all pop. Oh, the sun. 
I have a little bit of yellow on my palette still. Let's see if I can get it. I like to put this at the top and I, a lot of times I put the white pearl on the bottom. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of yellow for the centers of my flowers. And again, I'm doing it as a wash, but you could do it a little darker because this year, we'll, we'll see it when you, look what happens when you put that dimensional magic on there. See the centers? Once you outline them and put the dimensional magic, it really makes everything pop. So then let's see the branch. I am using burnt sienna because I don't know I like it it's like a reddish brown and I just happen to like burnt sienna but there's a lot of browns um, so I'm gonna take like a little liner kind of sort of brush and I'm gonna just have I have water in this and I'm gonna make it watery maybe even get a little more because I don't I don't want to make it opaque I want to see the letters through I mean, even though they're going the wrong way. And just give some color to that branch. Um, they're cooking steaks and corn and what else? I think we're gonna have tater tots. I love tater tots now. <laughs> but like, if you think it's too dark, just touch it with your finger. Voila. All right, so. You know what I'm going to put while I have my liner? I'm going to put a little green stem from each flower. We're going to outline all this with a black pen. But I just want to put this on here to kind of have a little direction of where they're coming from. Um, cute, right? You can actually make the little... Uh, what would it be called like a little vein up to the leaf as well but I'm gonna do all this with a pen too so I mean if you want to do it now or after it don't matter it don't matter all right hold on I think I want to add a few um, leaves with just paint before we start to outline because that's like the fun part because everything starts to come together so I'm gonna take this green this is called a filbert and it's a super brush for making leaves it's a really great brush so I have water in my brush always and I'm gonna pull a little bit of this green and I load the brush I don't just take from the puddle and go to my piece I have a lot of paint in the bristles and then I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna put like a couple extra leaves just kind of here and there let's see I think that's it for that one um, yeah all right it's not looking like much yet but once we start outlining you know what I'm gonna do um, I want to jazz up my little birdie with some of the white pearl. Did I put that out yet? No. This white pearl is super pretty and it makes everything pop. I think I'm gonna put it on the leaves too. On the, um, here, I'll show you. So I'm going water, blot on my paper towel, a little tiny bit of that paint. You don't need very much. But look at that shimmer. It's so pretty. I have too much water. And I'm going to put a little bit up here. And then when you look at the piece after, it has all this. See, look at that. Oh, I love it. I love that. So a little bit on each of these leaves, the bigger leaves. I consider them. Oh, what the heck. I'll put it on here too. What the heck. And on the sun. The bottom of the sun right here. Give it a glow, a little glow. Look, you can see it, good. So right now the butterfly is glowing. So I think that was um, 10 minutes. I don't know, it could be my battery. My batteries don't last very long. 
Oh, I know where I want to put that. With my liner, I'm going to take a little bit of that white pearl and put it on the little wings here of my butterfly. Just like little bloop bloops. They're bloop bloops. Oh, and on the wing of my, of my bird. I think I'm going to put this on the wing of the bird. I've also mixed color into this white pearl, and you can get a pearly color then if you just use. So I'm gonna put that there. Now his wing is shining. I kind of want to shine up its head a little. And you know what else? He needs a cheek. He needs a little bit of yellow for his beak. A little bit of yellow. And I can put a little yellow for the um, butterfly body. I have very little yellow on my palette. Shoot. I gotta get some. Because I think I did, yeah, I did. I put yellow for the little um, butterfly body. Just right here. And we're gonna outline it. All right, let's go, let's go. All right, so this is the pen that I use. This is from Scarlet Lime. She is Thompson. Wait a minute. I have no brain today, you guys. Christy, Christy Thompson, Christy Tomlinson, Christy Thompson, Christy Tomlinson, Christy Tomlinson, that's it. Um, and I don't think she has any more left, but I did just order something from Amazon called the Fube, F-U-B-E. I'm going to try and put it in the description because I've been watching a couple of mixed media um, people and they use the Fube. It's like a ballpoint pen and it, um, it writes on a mixed media surface so that I mean, I need something to replace this, so I'm gonna try that and I'll let you know how it works out. So the next thing we're gonna do is kinda of outline everything with some type of a black. Um, I did, I used paint on my canvas because I just liked the way it looked. I, I think people are using paint pens to do detail work, to do lettering. Um, this flower is coming up a little bit, which is fine, I'll fix it. Um, and I don't have any paint pens yet. I think I have like one, but there are better quality ones. And I am thinking I might start an art journal. Uh, I feel like it's some place I don't have to worry about what it looks like. I can just play almost. Like even if I get a new product that I just want to play with, it's some place to play. Um, because what happens, those of you who watch my channel know, um, I do a craft show, one craft show a year. And whatever I make throughout the year, I just bring with me to the craft show. and. If I sell it, I sell it. I don't really make things because that would make my crafting a job and I don't want it to be a job. I want it to always be fun. So see how that starts to come to life. I like to do this too, down in the bottom I go and I make these little grass things, wiggles. Little grass wiggles, they're cute. I put the antenna on my butterfly. Um, so yes, yeah, so um, that's why I made a canvas and I made, you know, cause I'll try and sell it at my craft show, but it would have also just been really fun to make and be in an art journal. I have like two art journals. Um, they don't really have much in them, but uh, I think that's something I definitely wanna think about doing in the future. Now that I kind of have a process, I think some of you, if you've been watching my videos, 
you know that's very important to me to have a process now remember those leaves that I just painted on now I'm going to bring them to life and there was one there there's one here and there's one over here and I think that was it right so that's pretty much it I think I'm going to add um, a little bit more yellow up here just for like a glow I think the ones that we made that I made with you guys had plenty of yellow and gold right but this one I just feel like I want to add a little more yellow up there um, what else I'm gonna add gold paint around the edges and that's pretty simple to do but first let me just try to add my gold glow not gold yellow I'm gonna use yellow a side load so I want it to just be a wash and I'm just going to kind of put it up here near the sun around the back of the sun maybe just basically around the sun and I don't want to smudge anything hopefully that ink won't smudge and just blot and it almost looks a little green, which I'm not thrilled about. So, because I don't know though, I might not. I think it's okay. So to do the gold, all I do is take <clears throat> my gold, which here it is, and use my finger. And one thing before that though, I just wanna put these little highlights with the white pearl on the flower centers I like to put a little just like a little comma stroke almost I put it here on the rose right in the center um, that's basically it just on the centers so you see that so then for the gold I really just have it on my finger and kind of pushing like down so that the paint goes onto the top of the Hard. so you can see that so it's on the side and the top that is how I finish it it smells like tater tots I smell tater tots all right don't forget to sign it always sign your work and I like to sign mine on the back um, the last thing, I'm going to charge my batteries and I'm going to go away and come back when that is dry. I'm going to add some micro beads. These little micro beads, I'm going to show you what I do with them. And it adds dimension. I don't know if you can see that, but they are, they're super sparkly. We're going to add our stickles and a little bit of dimensional magic on the centers. Oh, he needs a cheek. And for that, you can just use paint. Or I happen to have these Faber Castell pit pens and I just take a little bit of pink and it's this the Faber Castell big brush and I just put a little spot of pink on his cheek and kind of touch it and then he has a little rosy cheek um, so yeah I'll be back I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll do the um, micro beads all right be right back okay so I went ahead and I finished the other one too one thing I noticed I did this branch pointing down and it kind of crashes into this flower not a big deal but just in design wise you could have flipped the branch and had more going on up here you know um, oh this one I did with the branch pointing up so you can kind of see the difference there's just more room down here just a little thing I thought I pointed out all right so to finish this off <clears throat> You know what I did too? I just put the green and the blue on, on the ones that we did, the background. And this one's just so much more sparkly and shiny. I like these, um, they're gonna look cool. This is just darker for some reason. Um, and actually they're all gonna turn out different. So, um, all right, I have this set. This is called Micro Bead Set. And it's by Recollections, which is the Michaels brand. And it says it adds texture and luster. 
multi-colors, easy to use, and this has, it doesn't, I would have put, definitely put yellow on the sun. I would like to see gold in these, but I've had this forever, like I said, so I just pulled what I have, and I'm, I've been using them quite a bit. I mean, my blue is halfway done. Um, so for this, I'm just putting blue in the sky up in this corner, and I put green kind of down around the grass area, just along the bottom. So here's what that looks like. See how this kind of even goes up the, the stem a little bit. And then I just put it in the corner of that one. Um, yeah, so just hit and miss with the glue. And I'm using the, um, I like the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, but again, it's what I have. I have this in my stash. I was really into this for a while. This has glitter in it. Can you see the glitter? If you shake it up, it's basically like the, um, Dimensional magic, um, sorry, glossy accents. This is dimensional magic. glossy accents, but this has glitter in it. So I was playing with that for a while and I have it and I figured, well, I'm going to use it for this since you're not really seeing it. It's being used as an adhesive. So, um, the other thing I like to use is this little, um, bowl and I've taken my, um, this is like a stamping. What is this called? Ugh. You know how you prep your surface before you emboss? It's like an embossing um, buddy, something like that. Because these beads get all over the place. I have made such a mess with these before. So I wanted to be able to do two at a time since I have these two. So I just take this and I take it and I kind of go along where I want it. And I like to make it like kind of dimensional-ish, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then when you pour the, oops, you know what, I'm gonna might as well do this one too while I'm at it. I try to make it look like grass is what I'm saying. I don't know. Listen, just play, this is fun. I open up this and pour slowly because these little beads bounce all over the place. But I basically just pour it on top of where I just put that and it sticks. So that's it. And yeah, you can see the glitter, the little gleam and glitter. Um, that's actually a lot, but I'm, I'm just gonna go along the bottom, kind of covered up a lot of the gold, and then I'm gonna do the other one. And FYI, close this as soon as you can, because I have knocked it and it, these little things get everywhere. So let's just look at the difference. Basically this one's all over the place. This one's just kind of like in three places and I like them both. So it's still wet. You can kind of tap it, push some of them in a little more. Um, but it dries awfully quick. And then I'm going to do the blue. This one's a much flatter, uh, this one's thicker. So I'm gonna set this aside and then, then I just take this bottle. Be careful, I really hope I don't make a mess. And I kind of try to guide it back into the tube. But you know, oh yay. This is like totally the most successful I've ever been. Okay, let's have, look, I wanna put that over there so I don't knock it over. Oh, <gasps> look at that. So this really makes a difference because the static from this, um, it's kind of like a wax coated bowl, right? I've gotten it wet before I've had, okay. Put the lid on and let's do the blue. So for the blue, I kind of just do it in this corner. That's what I've been doing. Kind of start in this corner and bleed out and then just kind of, that's really it. I don't know, just to add a little accent type thing. Uh, oh, I don't need that. I start in the corner and go like that. And I like this blue. There's like a green blue, but that's more of like an ocean. I like this for the sky. And then pour it on there again. Cool. And pour this on there. Oopsie. They are bouncy little beads. I am telling you. 
but look how cool it looks. I'm closed it up. It looks cool. I really, really like this effect. So that is basically it, you guys. You can, oh, you know what? No, I'm gonna do one more thing. <coughs> That's not quite dry yet, so don't um, rub your fingers in it. But if you have a little stickles, I used yellow stickles on some of these. I think this is mostly clear. This one might be yellow, but I'm gonna just use clear. And I put a little bit, and then I just smush it around with my finger. Like so. That's my doggy and my son. We just ate dinner, it was so good, my tater tots. Um, and then I'm gonna put, and you can put stickles wherever you want, but all I like to do is take this and put a little tiny, kind of, it makes a dimensional, almost like one of those acrylic, um, is that what they're called, acrylic dots? Maybe I'll put it on the center of this little guy too. I think I've put it on his beak before. So, and then just really set that aside and let it dry. And you will have yourself a mixed media ATC card. So I hope you guys like this. I really enjoy this piece. It's so happy and fun and easy. Um, like I said, just use what you have in your stash. Play around with different themes and different, um, this, I think I am going to post this under um, hashtag love summer art. Um, but, you know, it's a summery piece, I think, you know. Uh, where's my fave? This one's my fave right here. Uh, so, like I said, oh, I was saying, just use what you have. Don't be afraid to draw. I mean, it looks kind of coloring book, some people say, but I like it. I think it's pity and it makes me happy. All right, you guys, thanks for watching.